What about when it isn't just the buses? When it's the parks and the restaurants? When it's colored teachers and white schools? What about when we start voting, Miss Thompson? Because we are. And when we do, we are going to put Negroes in office. Sounds like science fiction to me, and I don't mean what Whoopi said. It's hard to believe that only a mere 50 years ago, parks, restaurants, and buses were segregated between blacks and whites. Having not lived through the civil rights era myself, the entire concept of racial segregation seems like it'd make more sense in dystopian fiction than a chapter of modern American history. But I guess those textbooks might as well be found in a corner of the library labeled dystopian nonfiction. Miss Thompson, why did you call me at home and tell me you couldn't carry me to work anymore? Well, if, if you won't ride the bus, Mr. Thompson doesn't see why I should have to suffer. I asked you to suffer, Miss Thompson. The Long Walk Home centers on two women living ordinary lives at the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. Odessa Connor, played by Whoopi Goldberg, works as a maid for Miriam Thompson, Sissy Spacek, who is a member of Montgomery, Alabama's wealthy white upper class. Odessa is informed by flyer of the black community's intent to boycott the city buses. Miriam offers to act as chauffeur for Odessa a few days out of the week, but when her husband Norman finds out, he expressly forbids it, leading Miriam to question her obligations as a wife and her morals as a human. Kind of like being stuck between a rock and a hard place, except that the rock is human decency and the hard place is your racist jerk of a husband. Whoopi Goldberg was having a big year in 1990, collecting oodles of awards for her performance in the breakout hit Ghost. And you'd think that Miramax would rush to release any film featuring the budding movie star to cash in on Ghost's hot success. But instead, The Long Walk Home was released initially on December 21st, then quickly withdrawn due to heavy holiday competition. You tell me. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? I hadn't heard of The Long Walk Home before deciding what film to review for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I figured I would probably discuss Alan Parker's Mississippi Burning. And while that picture is a complex and great film in its own right, I found the movie's ultimate conceit to be in stark opposition to Dr. King's philosophy of nonviolence. I thought about discussing To Kill a Mockingbird, a favorite of mine when I was a boy, but it doesn't seem like Tom Robinson's fate was ever in his own hands. The fate of the cast of characters from The Long Walk Home might not entirely be in their own hands, but it's certainly in their feet. I made a funny. The movie tells a remarkable true story about what a group of ordinary people can accomplish by working together non-violently to fight for a better future. Sissy Spacek and Whoopi Goldberg are both excellent in the film, Whoopi giving a particularly moving performance by being so restrained, but I thought Dylan Baker was the real standout here. The actor oozes southern charm and captures the casual racism of the era to frightening effect. You got a good family, good community here. When was the last time you locked your door at night? Never. If you give in, what do you think is going to happen to this city? What do you think is going to happen to your family? No, you got to hold the line. We all do. And if she'd rather walk, bleed out the soles of her feet till she begs to ride that bus. While I wasn't impressed with Dwight Schultz's performance as Norman, the Thompson patriarch, I did enjoy how the character was written. Norman endears himself enough to the audience in the beginning of the film by being so loving towards his family that you forget to notice how wrong the family dynamic is in the first place, which complements Miriam's arc and the film's feminist undertone. The one aspect of the film I found suspect was his decision to provide Miriam's daughter, Mary Catherine, with the film's point of view voiceover. Every once in a while, the pace of the picture will be interrupted by an adult Mary Catherine revealing redundant or unnecessary information. The character being the least interesting in the film, I wondered if the move served any other purpose other than to complicate the film's continuity. I was only seven years old. Well, would you tell Clyde Sellers that one of his policemen threw my nine-year-old daughter out of Oak Park? The Log Walk Home was shot by legendary cinematographer Roger Deakins, who at this point had already established himself as a talented and versatile DP, having shot the hauntingly beautiful 1984 and equally as powerful Sid and Nancy, but believe it or not, I was not exactly fond of the look of the film. At times it felt more like a movie of the week, which seems to fit considering director Richard Pierce's extensive TV resume. 
Even so, it was a treat to see that Deacons managed to foreshadow what would eventually become one of the most popular internet memes on the planet. internet you can thank me later i always love to see where a movie will choose to start its story opening images are one of the most important things a film can get right and i loved how this movie began i was aware that blacks had to sit at the back of the bus but hadn't realized that after pain if there were whites already on board they had to exit and re-enter from the back it's a detail that glass over in school but it's an important one and i couldn't think of a better way to open the film except maybe for keyboard kitty the Long Walk Home moves slowly but builds to a surprisingly powerful climax that still seems to resonate to this day. In fact, there are a few things I caught in the film that managed to retain importance today, most notably the plot point of the Citizens Council of America, a network that Norman describes as a logical alternative to the Klan. The normalization of racism and the frightening display of mob mentality, especially in halls of that size, are something that's been brought back out into the open again over the last few years. Dylan Roof, responsible for the tragic Charleston Church shootings, embraced the network's rhetoric in his manifesto, but was forgiven by one of the victim's family members, saying, You took something very precious to me. I will never talk to her again. I will never ever hold her again. But I forgive you and have mercy on your soul. It's good to see that Dr. King's spirit, even in the worst of times, still lives on. I'm giving The Long Walk Home a B plus as it tells a beautiful story well, but probably would have been served by a better director. I recommend it to moviegoers interested in the era and those interested in the philosophy of Martin Luther King Jr., who despite never being seen in the picture, his presence is felt throughout. Until next time, I'm Clifford Yetis and this one's In the Can. Yeah, I am trying to hold my head up as a white man in this town and you're caught in a nigger maid. At a time in America when everyone did what was expected, two women had the courage to do what was right. When it's all said and done, people are going to look at you, Miss Thompson, and they're going to say that you were part of this. Sissy Spacek, Whoopi Goldberg, The Long Walk Home.